Mercedes and their W15 enter the Australian Grand Prix weekend on the back of two very disappointing races in Bahrain and Jeddah, with their simulation tools suggesting that the W15 should be capable of going faster than it currently has managed thus far in the real world through high speed corners, something that the Melbourne track has. With Albert Park's run through turns 7 and 9 and 10 having high speed chicanes, and they're exactly in the same range that has exposed the W15's weaknesses so far, which is the 250 km an hour. Mercedes knows it needs an immediate response if it is to not endure more trouble ahead. This correlation problem is a continuous one that has now plagued them for the last three seasons during the ground effect era. But the break between Jeddah and Melbourne has allowed the men and women led by Toto Wolff to analyse and work on the crucial issues that have emerged over the first two race weekends with a fine comb in order to mount their fire back starting this weekend in Australia. And all is not lost since not all of the sim data isn't correlating into the real world, as we can see through the GPS data over the Jeddah weekend. It's just in one crucial area that things don't translate from the sim world to the real world. And that's through the high speed corners. And not only that, but the team will also be reverting to an older spec floor that was used throughout testing in Bahrain. Now this is something that I wasn't actually aware of even occurring this season with the W15. I thought they were still using the same four that they had used throughout testing. And as to the best of my knowledge, there actually wasn't any mention of a new floor in the pre-practice upgrade notes each team has to submit through every Grand Prix weekend. And this might explain a little bit about what has happened over these first two race weekends. But it also doesn't make for good reading for the team and the competence in how they operate, if that is the case. But if reverting back to the Melbourne floor helps them to solve that issue, it will unlock tremendous amounts of lap time currently locked away within the W15. And the Mercedes team aims to unlock some of that starting this weekend in Melbourne, where they will look to cement that position as third quickest behind Red Bull and Ferrari. And if things go really well, perhaps they can even beat Ferrari in a straight fight. The car's performance on the Secure and Jetta circuits was thoroughly analysed before the trip to Australia, and Toto Wolff explained the weak and strong points that have merged in the first two races. We have worked hard since Jeddah, building on the lessons learned from the first two races. It's encouraging to see the potential of the W50, but there are also clear areas for improvement. We looked competitive in the low and medium speed corners, but the high speed ones have been a weak point so far. Mercedes does expect the first positive responses to occur during the Melbourne race weekend, as its team principal underlined. We worked hard to understand why our performances did not reflect our expectations. Improving this aspect is an important goal. We hope to make some initial progress for Melbourne and that will guide our development over the coming weeks. But before we go any further, if you've enjoyed the content within this video, please consider subscribing as I would greatly appreciate it as I'm looking to grow this channel and I have a lot more content that I want to produce. And I may even be going to the Japanese Grand Prix later on in April, so I could have some really interesting content to bring you all. Right, back to the video. But the biggest question that still remains, away from the team just being outright slow through the high speed corners at the moment in the real world with their W15, is actually why is that the case? What is happening in the real world with the car through high speed corners that is not allowing the car to reach peak performance through them, which the simulation data suggests they should? And it was very apparent this weakness of theirs for all to see. Just have a look at this clip on screen at the moment of Hamilton v Norris in the final stint in the Jeddah race while on soft tyres. Norris leaves Hamilton for dead in the space of what? Three corners? That is crazy to witness visually. And it can't continue to happen for much longer. So will Mercedes find the problem? And secondly, 
can and how do they solve it? Well, I believe the answer to that question lies in one particular area. And it will also explain why the data in the sim is telling them one thing while in the real world it's a complete other story. Basically, the car is constantly bouncing far too much throughout the phases of a corner. And I'm talking, of course, about high speed corners here. And it's playing havoc with the levels of downforce that the floor is generating for them. And this is where suspension plays such a vital role in your ability to stop this excessive bouncing, an area which Red Bull greatly excel at and has been a hallmark of their cars through the ground effect era. They have both an anti-dive and anti-squat design incorporated into their suspension systems and this allows their cars and obviously as an extension of that their drivers a stable platform throughout the entire corner meaning the downforce level produced stays constant or at least a lot closer than what Mercedes currently experiences and this of course gives the drivers confidence to know what the car is going to do and how it's going to feel or behave and how to react to that. But of course it isn't just the suspension that plays a role in this outcome. The floor itself and its design is also an important factor in this process. If we were to compare the floors of both Mercedes and Red Bull, they would be dramatically different, I would suspect. And we had a very good look at that last season, thanks to both teams having their floors exposed over the Monaco Grand Prix weekend. And what we gathered from that was the sheer amount of detail that is lacking on all of the cars in comparison to Red Bull and of course this includes Mercedes as you can see from the two pictures on screen now there is a level of detail seen on the RB19's floor and this can only have improved going into this season that is just miles above anything else that any of the teams have been able to do and I believe this is another reason for the dramatic difference between all of the teams when it comes to race pace they have that stable platform that enables them to have the downforce level they want throughout every phase of the corner and this is a mysterious characteristic that the Mercedes team have to figure out and get on top of and it is that very mysterious characteristic which isn't showing up in the sim world but is present in the real world that makes the W15 not perform as it should be in high speed corners where a combination of the bouncing and as a result of that the constant loss and change of the downforce levels and grip is costing the team and its drivers a chunk of lap time to the opposition and the team feels that this weakness is accounting for pretty much all of its deficit as the car seems to be very competitive in all other areas of a track through all the other different speed ranges of corners. And so if the team are able to get on top of this phenomenon and unlock the high speed corner performance that the sim data says this W15 has, then they're going to find a whole chunk of lap time. And I think with that, they will be able to fight their, you know, current opposition a lot more closer on the track and perhaps probably really would be a little bit ahead of them in certain aspects or in certain tracks right guys that's the video hope you've all enjoyed it if you have leave a comment down below and i'll catch you in another video